So we've got potentially a foot of snow coming here at the end of this week. We really need to get this building closed up. So we've got a front door that the client purchased. I've got the back door through here. That is a slider patio door that's getting delivered today. And the garage door installer is supposed to be coming and putting a garage door in early this week, which means that we'll have the roof on, all the windows installed, doors installed, and other than the soffit still being open because they're vented soffits and we don't have the soffit installed, this house will be closed up and we'll be able to actually work inside. And that'll give us a lot of work to do on inclement weather days. But this morning, our main goal is to start closing up the holes that are still in this uh, house to get it kind of sealed up for the weather that's coming. Nice um, fiberglass jam, uh, fiberglass door, just a, nice, just a nice door. The goal here is we're building a house that is well-built, efficient, cost-effective, what most people in America can do uh, for their homes. Now, my client had bought one of these and I've never used one. I've obviously seen them. Um, we would just normally make these out of aluminum flashing, so just bend our own. But this is a pre-made sill plan. It comes, sill pan, comes in three pieces. And the goal here is that any wind-driven rain uh, or rain that comes into the door, like let's say threshold, is gonna go onto this pan and it's going to go out. Now, since we're on a concrete slab, this is a good idea. I, I've seen in times where the door leaks and water has made its way back through and uh, you don't want that. So this is gonna create a nice pan, a place for moisture to go if there's an issue. So I got this little bit of PVC uh, cement. We're gonna get this lined up and then we will apply this to get this joint. Um, so first thing I wanna do is, I don't have my expandable level, but I do have this nice straight piece of trim. I'm just gonna set it here into the opening, make sure that I'm straight. And then that way I can make a nice mark here. I'm gonna use up the rest of this Lexel and run a couple beads through here. And then we can go ahead and we'll set one in. Must be like a primer and glue in one. Just want to check it for straight. Okay, I like that. I'm just gonna stand on it, try to create a little bit more pressure. All right, we got this sill pan set, and before we put the door in, we're gonna go ahead and take some sealant, and we're just gonna go ahead and run a bead right along this back edge. And this is not necessarily, we're not concerned about water here. This is so we get a little bit of air seal when that door pushes in. So now we'll go ahead and set this in here. Now, because I'm doing this myself, what I'm gonna do is take this guy here, we're just gonna screw this in, and it's gonna stop it from falling out while I get it set up. Okay. Oh man, well, this is not looking great because this concrete is not appearing to be very level. Check this. Here we're at five, almost seven eighths. Here at five and three quarters, which means that this side is about an eighth inch higher than this side. So what that means, unfortunately, is that this door will not be able to be installed perfectly plumb. We'll see what we can do to make it uh, as good as possible. Obviously that is the goal. Problem is I'm hitting down here on the bottom and on the top. That's just because that needs to go in. Let's go ahead and put that screw in. Okay, so we're getting closer. The door closes, but what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start to lose my reveal. Now you can make the door work, but as you can see, my laser here is right on the edge of this jam. And as I go up, I'm over here about a strong eight. So it's not gonna be plumb, but I don't really have a choice because this concrete, it is what it is. But I'll be able to manipulate this enough you'll never know that it's not perfectly plumb. It's not like the door is gonna 
you know, drastically close or swing open on you. All right, so now that I have the door basically set, what I'm doing is trying to fine tune it. And I'm looking at the reveal and I'm trying to feel how it closes. But I think that this actually isn't there that far off. So let's go ahead and get some shims along this edge and along these hinges and let's get it screwed in as is. All right, now time to install the deadbolt. Don't ever want to overscrew these because then you might risk stripping them. So just snug them up. And then go ahead and pop this back on. No, I did it the wrong way. I just try not to use the power drill so I don't want to strip anything. Easy. All right, now we're gonna install this patio door. The first thing I wanna do is make sure that my opening is level. I'm perfectly, perfectly good here, perfectly good here. So now what I'm gonna do is there's actually a call out for uh, sealant location. Since we don't have a wood uh, threshold that we're sitting at, we don't have to worry about sealing it with tape or anything like that. Quarter, inch and a quarter, two and a quarter. Oops, the reason this line is important is because the door has grooves underneath of it. These locations are obviously where it's flat and going to hit the sealant. And we wanna make sure that we go up the side Now that we have this door installed, this flange is not to be nailed through. It is literally just to kind of set the door, uh, but we need to seal this off. And because this is kind of mechanically fastened to the door, this is not a perfect seal. So we're gonna use the Fentrum from Sega. Now this is the Fentrum 230, I believe. For, so this is outdoors, the gray. And what's nice about this is it has this little sticky half inch uh, bend. And what we can do is just run it right alongside that piece of gray mechanical flashing on the door, like so. And it's gonna stick to the door. So the nice thing is it makes it very easy to run your adhesive, your sealant, your tape, whatever it is, back onto the door. Uh, if you just are using regular tape for this, this can be done. It's just a little bit more of a pain. And then this is where the beauty of it is, see this? It opens right up, staying sealed to the door frame, but we're gonna be able to seal it back now onto the wall itself. So this is a two-part pole, so we'll go ahead and make sure that we're nice and tight into the corner. Pull off the first piece of backing. I'm just using my squeegee to make sure that it stays nice and tight in the corner. And then once we have this one done, look how nice and clean that is. Then we're gonna go ahead and start with the other side of the backing. And this is what's gonna seal out really nice to the weather logic. Now, one thing to note is that it is in the single digits today. And what I love about the Sega Fentrum tape, and most Sega tapes that I've used anyway, doesn't matter the temperature, man, they perform. It is, it is great. Okay, so you can see that. I mean, that is a beautiful tape job. It didn't even, it wasn't even that hard because the Sega tape just makes this very easy. So now we'll go ahead and do the top. thing I like about using a squeegee really helps me get into these 
kind of ins and outs, especially in this situation with this trim, makes it really easy to kind of make sure that you're getting good pressure when it's not an even surface. A roller is good if it's an even surface. The squeegee is the way to go in my opinion. Now, if you're asking why we didn't use Fentrum on these windows, specifically in this application, is because it goes onto the frame so effortlessly and gets a good seal from frame to the sheathing. With these windows being a one piece uh, unit, we didn't really need that because the flange, everything is one piece. So it would have been just a waste to flash back onto the frame of the window because the frame and the flange were one in the same versus this door is not that, uh, is not built that way. You could totally use Fentrum all the time. Uh, it's just not nearly as inexpensive. All right, door done. And we wanna keep the snow and the weather out of this as much as possible. It is extremely windy out and extremely muddy out. We've gotten about a half inch of rain overnight and the site conditions are not the best. But now that we have all the sheathing on, roof on, and windows and doors installed, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna come inside. Nice, much better in here. We're gonna work from inside to get all the measurements on the windows and doors. And then we're gonna go back to my shop where it's dry, warm, and we're going to pre-assemble all of our windows because we're using smart side trims and all I need to know is the outside dimensions of the frame. And then I can calculate all the cuts and measurements from the shop, assemble them, glue them, uh, pocket hole screw them. Then we'll bring them back and all we have to do is just set them into the window equally spaced and fasten them. Let's go ahead and get all these measurements and then head back to the shop where we can assemble these windows. So when we're doing the smart side trims, we gotta make sure we have a gap around the perimeter. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and get the out to out measurement, which is 35 and a half. And, and I actually knew what these should be because I ordered these windows. I knew the rough opening and usually um, the actual window frame size is the same on the inside and outside. But I like to confirm it because these are a clad window, which means they could be a slightly bigger on the outside than the inside frame. However, these are basically the exact same. So these were all uh, three, three by five. So we take a half inch off for the entire perimeter and that is the size of this window. So I'm just gonna grab some of these uh, eyeball ones to confirm. We got a lot of the same size. And just to double check, 39 and a half. Yeah, these are gonna be the exact same as to what I was expecting. But the last thing I wanted to do was not come over here this morning, double check the dimensions and then them be wrong. So I think we're good. I got everything I need to know. We'll head back to the shop. All right, so Greg's getting the cut hub set up back here in the shop. I don't like doing this very much in the shop only because without proper dust collection, it can create a little bit of a dusty mess and then it gets all over everything. But at the end of the day, this is a workshop and it's not wet and rainy and cold. So I'm gonna set up my centipede. I like this. When you set this up, once you put a nice solid piece of, uh, this is legacy subfloor, inch and an eight. This is, this is like my board I use to do assembly on because it's rigid, flat, and just a nice work area. So once the centipede's down, you put a top on it and plenty stable. Greg's gonna rock the cut hub. While he's cutting, I'll work on Craig jig and assembly, and hopefully we'll whip these out pretty quickly. All my measurements here, the quantities of windows, and I'm gonna take these measurements and then I'm gonna devise a cut list so that way we can, you know, there's a lot of similarities. We've got nine of the exact same window and then we've got some other windows that share the same dimensions. And so if I can get a nice cut list, we can set the cut hub up behind me, you'll see, and use our stopper to repetitiously and accurately cut all the similar measurements without like any effort. Once the first one's set up, you guys have probably seen the cut hub if you haven't, it's an amazing uh, thing to have specifically for something like this because you can make uh, very effortless and re repetitious cuts of the same measurement in no time. In these boards, I've got a cut end and I've got the original 
uh, primed end. This is what's gonna hang down at the bottom because see the way we design our window trims, the top board goes the full length, the side boards tuck underneath and go all the way down. And then the bottom board is in here like so. And the reason is, is it reduces the number of places for water to work its way in. You wouldn't want these running all the way up because then it would introduce a, a gap here. At least this way, water will continually kind of flow down. You don't want to miter your smart side. That's not recommended. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put some pocket holes. And then we're gonna line it up over here to get primed before we assemble. All right, that should be all 18, two, four, six, eight, 16, 18. Now, even though these are joints that are gonna be buried inside of the window uh, trim box that I'm gonna pre-assemble, I still think it's important to prime these just to stop from you know water going in and potentially doing any damage in the cut edge. I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling these. So I've got my top, I've got my two sides and the pocket hole screw ends will go towards my top. Make sure we spread that around, get as much adhesion on the surface as possible. I'm gonna wanna make sure that my outside is lined up very nice. Clamp that down. And then we're using the blue pocket hole screws from Craig Jig because these are made for outdoor use. Different sizes are made for different thickness of material. So something to note, you wanna make sure that you're using the right fastener. They even have coarse thread and fine thread, which I'm using the coarse thread, which is for uh, this type of material. It's not a hardwood, it's a you know pressed composite. Also something to think about is uh, it's good to use a drill, not an impact, because you don't want to over drive these screws. That can happen. Now the bottom piece has pocket holes on both sides because that is going to die into both sides of the bottom of the side windows. Now by clamping this down to this nice flat surface, what I'm doing is making sure that the face of my window trims are flush with each other. Sometimes there might be some uh, difference in thickness and that's gonna be worked out on the back side, not the front side that you're gonna see. So it's another nice benefit to these clamps. Just cleaning the surface where some of this glue might have oozed out. And then we can hit it with a touch up brush also when we in install. If any of that glue dries and looks brown or whatever, get most of it off now, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, this Milwaukee install driver is perfect for this sort of thing. It's got plenty of power. You can clutch it, change the speeds, it's comfortable, uh, lightweight, battery lasts all day and uh, it's just a nice little tool, man. It's really nice to use. You can keep your bits down here. So it's got a little magnet clip. I like it. I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to buy it. Feel free, thank me later. This one's got some paint overage or something. It's not going together very good. Let's see what happens when I screw it. Oh, wow, look at that, what do you know? Never get that without doing Craig Jig. Craig Jig makes the impossible possible. See, now that this is Craig jig together, pocket hole screwed, whatever you want to call it. 
there's, you're not going to install your trim one piece at a time on a wall around a window and get them to be that flush around all four pieces. Because with a nailing fin, with imperfections in the wall, whatever it is, when you go to put the pieces on and nail, they are inevitably going to move around. This is gonna be locked in tight, and when we put this on there, we'll be able to nail it, and it will stay perfect all the way around. So this is our double window that is on the front gable that is two windows, two double hungs put together, and we're gonna have the trim right through the middle. I hope this works out. We did our best when we installed the window to try to make sure that all of our dimensions were as accurate and consistent as possible. When we go install it, it's either gonna fit good or it won't. And with a window like this, it really pays to do pre-assembly because um, with all the random pieces and trying to get it to work out perfect, this will definitely be the easiest way to do it. Like even by hand, I can't push these joints together nearly as tight as when those screws grab on and, and pull it together with the power of the screw because it kind of just, I don't know. I don't know why it's so much easier with the screw to get it to go together nice and tight and take away the gaps. I mean, you would think I would be able to pull them physically, but it just doesn't work the same. So imagine trying to do this around the window and to get those gaps tight, it's not gonna happen and then you're gonna be forced to use caulk. See, look at that, it just sucked that together. All right, now that I have the outside done, Greg, where's my tape measure at? Your tape measure, our tape measure, the one we're both gonna use for a second. 37, okay. So now we know where the middle goes. This is my middle piece? Nope. Right. No? Nope. This is? Eyeballed close to middle. And go ahead and measure this real quick. 35, 13 16 35, just making sure it's exactly in the middle. All right. So there you go, now you can see that. That's, that's kind of cool. All right, now we have our pile of all of our windows and doors. Actually, we have one door that we still have to make, uh, but that's not installed yet, so I didn't wanna just randomly guess the measurements. And this is all of our windows, all of our doors. We'll let them set up, we'll transport them over to the job site, and it will be as easily, you will see, as just setting them up, making sure the spacing is, is good, and nailing them off. All right, just got over to the job site. As you can see, we've got all of our window and door frames that we pre-assembled in the shop, in the trailer, put a strap around them, and that worked pretty nicely. So now we can go ahead and unload these, get these all fastened up. I think what we're gonna do, because it's so muddy out, I'm not going to get out my compressor, my hose, my siding nailer. We're gonna go ahead and put these all on with my pass load trim gun, which is approved, okay, it's good practice. But then I'm gonna come back through. I like the full round head nail. With the touch up paint, you don't even know it's there, especially with the cedar grain trims. But just for now, because it's muddy, because it's crappy out, I'm just gonna tack it up with my pads load. So let's go ahead and get these out, get these installed. Well, moment of truth. Are you gonna check it? Okay, you know, when you, take your measurements on site and then go build stuff in the shop. You gotta make sure things are right, especially when you do everything. So we went ahead and made all these in the shop and now we're gonna go ahead and install these. Here, you get that side, can you reach? Maybe. You can't reach, you short man. I got you. Uh, Just don't let that one, I'll do, shove it in. Do you have a bad case of okay, short there. Now, that's how we know the top is good. You're... How close are you? So is mine? So that is awesome because that means that we've got perfect spacing on these. That is awesome. If you were to try to do this on site right now, one piece at a time, you would never get this. This would never work. And mainly, 
It's because the flashing, in fact, I wish I had a couple pieces to show you, but the flashing that goes around the window itself is not perfectly in plane with the sheathing. And so when you go to put a piece on here, it's gonna naturally wanna roll unless you use shims and all that other stuff. But with the one piece I can do this one. glued, oh, you can reach this one? Yeah. Glued and screw, uh, screwed together, we can just put this where we want it and kind of, hey, I think it's pretty good. No. No, it needs to go over a little bit. Yeah. Nope. Stop. Collaborate and listen. Um, I don't even know what I was saying now. Yeah, it just gives us a perfect reveal around everything. Perfectly flat joints and it doesn't rock back. And we'll end up coming back and doing more nails with the siding gun and then touch all these nails up. But look at that, just how quick it was me talking to you and, and not even really focusing that much on doing. So easy. Why are you only sipping on two or three shots? Let me show you how to turn it up and not it. Hey. Oh yeah, that's... It's amazing what uh, putting some more trim around these windows does though. It really builds them out nice. Nice, dude. So obviously, uh, this little bottom board is what was necessary to transport this pre-assembled door trim, but we'll just zip it off. It's got a couple screws in it. You know what, let's go design doors, and we'll do that dip, and then we'll patent the idea as a guttered door header. So we'll funnel all the water, instead of right over the top middle, It'll go to special little gutters that will go out through the door itself. We'll put gutters built into the door. Yeah. Let's hope we did it right. I hope so too. I mean, geez, why has it got to look so good? Why does it? <laughs> Heck yeah, nice job. Feels good when it kind of playing comes together. I'll start with the foundation. That's true. Who taught you that, dude? You're a smart man. All right, and that is all the window trims. Literally in about an hour's amount of time, and Greg and I were not working hard because there's not a whole lot to do out here with the mud. We don't want to move our machinery. We've got corner trims that we can't put on until our soffits are finished. We can't get our soffits and fascia done until our lift is running around, which I'm going to let Greg decide if he wants to make money today or go home. And... What are you gonna do? Make a lot more money on farming simulator. Wait, say it again. Farming what? Farming simulator. Okay, I thought you said simulator. 